Hey guys, this is Melina with Austin Underground and I'm here with Active Defiance. How are you guys today? Really good. Thanks for having us. Awesome. So you're on the last leg of your tour. Um, so how has how's the experience been so far? That's been great. We're finishing up. We have four shows left and uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, we're out with a band called The Legion who's on uh, Metal Blade Records as well and we're having a great time. Uh, yeah. We've kicked it uh, all the way from LA up through the Northeast into Canada. Yeah down the east coast and now we're here in Texas. Awesome. Yeah. So um, how did you guys all meet each other to form the band? Because I know that all of you are from, you were in different groups before this one. Well except for Sean and I. Sean mm -hmm. and I are really the ones who kind of put the band together. Mm -hmm. We had left a band called Megadeth uh, prior to this and uh, you know initially weren't really talking about doing anything on our own but through uh, you know phone calls and stuff like that after we left we quickly decided to put together the band. Mm -hmm. So then we searched for a singer and we came up with Henry Derrick who uh, kills it. And then, uh, you know, when it came to finding a bass, Sean had recommended Matt Bichand and, and he's awesome. He's a great all around musician. He plays bass, guitar, sings, and uh, you know, he's just a nice guy. <laughs> so that's how we put the band together. And this was less than a year ago, actually. Okay. So. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Okay. Sean says, Yep. <laughs> um, so how has everyone's sound come together to form Active Defiance's sound? Well, it's just being really, in terms of writing music, Chris and I wrote, wrote the music for this record because at the time we didn't have uh, Matt and Henry in the band and, and we just kind of, the only blueprint that we had was we wanted to make a, a complete heavy metal record and Chris wrote half the songs and I wrote half the songs. We, I mean, the, it's a kind of a, a vague blueprint because the word heavy metal now means so much to so many different people, but I think we were kind of honed in because we like so many different things and, and heavy metal as well. It gave us the freedom to, you know, if Chris wanted to write a song with a, a classical acoustic intro, which he did with Refrain to Refactory, he had another song, uh, Poison Dream, that had a cello in it, a piano intro, but then we had stuff that was more thrash metal and old school metal. It was just a really good mixed bag of songs which ended up being on the Birth and the Burial record. So we didn't limit ourselves to say, we have to sound like this and you have to sing like that. It was nothing like that. It was just yeah. us having the, the musical freedom uh, to do what we wanted, but still maintaining the fact that we were going to write heavy metal songs. That was the only uh, blueprint we had. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So, um, so your your album came out. It was released August twenty first. Yeah. Um, so, what, what was the process for creating it like? Uh, you know, it really was Sean and I starting off with all of the music. We we basically he wrote five songs, I wrote five songs, and then we got the singer Henry and uh, started uh, collaborating on uh, lyrics. Mm -hmm. um, so he had a he contributed quite a bit on lyrics this CD and. Uh, and from there, we just we just kind of built it. So it was musically, it was mainly Sean and myself to, to kick it off. But then vocally, Henry came in in time to, to write some of that. And unfortunately, Matt came in too late to do any of the writing, but he did get to play bass on this CD. So we can't wait to see what he has for the next CD. Awesome. Yeah. So how has the response uh, been for the album? It's been great. It's actually succeeded my expectations initially. We were. We were, we've been on now the Sirius XM um, liquid metal, Devil's Dozen charts. I think we just fell off it last week. I think we're on it for three months solid, which is for, yeah, for a new <laughs> band. I mean, that's really an incredible accomplishment as, as far as I see it, you know what I mean? So we just, week after week, we're on it. And then one song fell off, a song called Throwback, which Chris wrote. And the next week, our next single, which is called Legion of Lies, got right back in there. So it's like, you know, double kind of shot of, of a new material so it's in that respect it's been really good we've got amazing reviews um, the fans that come out to the shows that mean the consensus pretty much is they all really love the show and uh, the way we present it in a live format so it's it's been really positive which which is a great thing mm -hmm. awesome so where do you draw your inspiration from songs like poison dream and legion of lies <laughs> well for poison dream um, that really was you know I kind of started off with the piano part with that and then wanted it to go into an extremely heavy thrash kind of rhythm. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean inspiration is such a tricky thing because you never know when it's going to show its face you know. Um, but it really did start with the piano part for me and then uh, like I said I wanted it to go into that thrash version and then from there it just kind of 
developed into the bass breakdown and, and the uh, melodic guitar center section. So um, that's hard to describe in a way. <laughs> Okay, um, so what motivates you guys to keep making music after so long? We, we love it. That's the bottom line. We love the fact that we're able to play music and, and record records and release music and then people actually like it. You know what I mean? It's, you have to be, in, from my perspective, at the end of the day, you know, you, you have to love what you do for, in terms of being a musician. If you're trying to create music to, um, gain you know uh, fans and all that stuff and you, so, if there's something you don't believe in like if you wrote if we were to start a pop band mm -hmm. people would know it's fake right away because it's not that's not where we're at musically I mean I, I appreciate that kind of music and all that stuff and I respect it but it's not something that I would want to do I, I the music that we're doing now he listens to Justin Bieber all the time right. <laughs> aside from him but the music that we're creating is a hundred percent genuine it's not done to try to sell more records or try to follow a trend if you list our record there's no way we can we're following any trend because it's all over the place so we're, we're doing it for ourselves first and with the hopes that people like it to me that's the best way and the most organic way you can create music and you have to do it for yourself first otherwise why are you doing it yeah. and then if people like it how awesome is that yeah. so okay um so last question what can we expect for the band's future well, right now we're really trying to go out and support this CD. It was just released two months ago, so we're going to try and do a lot of touring. We're hoping to get over to Europe next summer and also to South America as well, and we're probably going to try and do some more dates here in the U.S. We actually have three of them, the 27th, 28th, and 29th with Kill Switch and Gage up in the Northeast. Uh, we're extremely looking forward to that. And uh, after this album cycle ends, probably the beginning of 2017, I would say we'll probably get ready to have another release. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much for, wa for watching Austin Underground. See you later. Bye.